Now I'll call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who has come out to the meeting tonight and also those that are viewing it on uh, G10 television. I'd like to begin the night by having, we got some uh, special guests out here that, uh, that just happen to be here in uniform, or some of our Boy Scouts from Troop 777. I'd like to ask you, if you and your Scoutmaster, if you would come forward and uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we give you thanks for a beautiful day. We give you thanks for all the blessings you so graciously bestow upon us individually and as the city of Jacksonville. We give thanks for all of our city employees who strive each day to give the best, their best, in service to our citizens. In the last two weeks, we've lost two former employees who gave over 20 years, each one of them, of service to our city and his citizens. Michael Urey in sanitation, and Paul Lavin in animal control. We mourn their loss, we give thanks for their service, and we pray for their families. We pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world, for their safeties, and for their anxious families. And as always, we pray for our mayor and for our council that your guidance and your direction would always be with them. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you for uh, leading us in the pledge tonight. Uh, Council, you have uh, had the opportunity to review the agenda for tonight, and I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. We have uh, some presentations to make tonight, at least one presentation tonight. And I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Washington here, uh, who is the uh, council li liaison to the Environmental Appearance uh, com Committee, or is it a commission? Committee, mm -hmm. to join me. Thank you. I'd like to have Mr. Patrick Carroll to join me up front. Uh, also, hey Patrick, how you doing? Good to see you again. All right. So we are. Uh, we're, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at some of our adoptive uh, adoptive stream uh, participants, and uh, this program. Uh, as well as as well established clean and green effort that we have here in Jacksonville, the goal is to involve our citizens in volunteer effort of monitoring cl and cleaning our uh, city's waterways. The Water Quality Division has led this initiative to provide an additional avenue for our citizens to uh, be directly involved with our clean and green programs and advance our goal of stormwater education. Um, it is therefore appropriate that these Clean and Green Star Awards recognize those who have put uh, feet on the ground and in the stream to help make us uh, this a better place uh, for us to live, work, and play. And this evening we recognize five efforts that have gone into this Clean and Green effort. And uh, I think I would be remiss if I didn't ask Pat to join me up here. <laughs> Pat Donovan Potts, who uh, is our uh, water quality person here, expert. So our first, uh, our first one tonight 
is going to uh, be for the uh, New River Sail and Power Squadron. And um, those same scouts that were up here a few minutes ago, I believe you're here with uh, John Willie here tonight uh, to receive this reward. I think that y'all did some of the work to help uh, with the stream that y'all cleaned up. And I uh, want to say that uh, the New River Sail and Power Squadron has adopted a large section of the Upper New River and most of uh, Blue Creek for, for stewardship. Their first cleaning was in July of 2014. On the screen here, you see some of them out there actually doing some of the work uh, and uh, doing their cleaning, clean and green efforts in the waterway. Okay, so we got it. John, if you join us up front and bring your uh, bring your crew with you. Get you on camera here. <laughs> okay. All right. On behalf of the mayor and the Jacksonville City Council and the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Group, the Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award is given in recognition of the efforts to the New River Sail and Power Squadron to accept stewardship of and to adopt portions of the Upper New River and Blue Creek by organizing and executing cleanup activities which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville program presented on this day, April 21st, 2015, before the Jacksonville City Council. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I'd like to thank Sturgeon City, or well, Riverworks, for inviting us into sharing this program with them. We really got involved in it, and we've been working really well with Sturgeon, uh, Sturgeon City, providing uh, help for them with their safe boating activities for the youngsters and their river cleanup. Uh, I'd like to thank you for this award, and we will continue to do our good effort in keeping these rivers clean up in our area. Thank you. Thanks again. I left one important thing out here. The Boy Scouts that we have here aren't from the Jacksonville area. They are from the Sneedsville, Sneeds Ferry area that came up to join us and help us with this river cleanup. And they are going to be staying with us to continue this. So that's a big thanks to them for them doing this with us. Thank you. Next, I have some folks from the New River Rotary Club that are here. We have Glenn Spradling, Jay Solace, and Skip Clarkson. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, these guys uh, are members of the New River Rotary Club, I take it. And y'all uh, uh, made the front page of the Daily News not too long ago, uh, or just this past weekend, for the efforts that you did uh, to set an example for Earth Day. Uh, they help to encourage a countywide cleanup involving all the area rotor rotary clubs. But this evening we recognize the New River Rotary Club for their efforts to adopt the Jacksonville Landing Area to provide stewardship. Their first cleaning was J June 14th of 2014. Again, we thank you very much for your assistance in that area. And that's, that's one of our uh, prized possessions over there, the landing. So thank you very much.
On behalf of Mayor Sammy Phillips and the Jacksonville City Council, as well as the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, we would like to present the Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award in grateful recognitions of the efforts of the New River Rotary to accept, to accept stewardship and of to adopt the City of Jacksonville landing area by organizing and executing cleaning activities which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville City Program presented on this day, April 21st, 2015. Congratulations. About a year ago, as we were starting our new rotary year, we decided that we were going to uh, go back, and since we were the New River Rotary, it seemed only logical that we adopt something to support the New River. So we began uh, planning for and then executing the cleanup of, the, uh, of that section, what we refer to as between the bridges of, of the New River, referring to uh, Sherry Thurston's rather well-known uh, uh, artwork and uh, we, we thought that that was an area that an awful lot of people that come into Jacksonville see and it's an area that we needed to, to make sure stayed appropriately clean so that it would uh, reflect well on the city so that's the area that we've uh, that we've adopted and, and we've worked hard and uh, it's amazing the amount of trash that can uh, that can show up in that that one area in just a short period of time so we can see this is a long-term uh, project that we'll keep working on. Thank you for the recognition. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I'd like to invite the Sturgeon City Adopt a Stream group to join me up here. Uh, Shannon Myers uh, was selected to uh, represent uh, Sturgeon City. Did you have anybody else come with you? No, I'm actually representing her father and Oh, Donna's in love. Okay. Come up, come up so she won't feel so all by herself. There you go. Uh, there you go, Al. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's part of it, too. Um, in 1999, when the city formed the Sturgeon City Nonprofit, we challenged this organization to provide and promote stewardship of the New River. Uh, they have done that with the adoption of the area adjacent to Sturgeon City along Wilson Bay. And they have involved hundreds of adults and youth in their efforts to promote litter reduction, habitat protection, and stewardship. I want to thank you all for your efforts in, in beautifying that area of our, our city. Uh, you know, that place has a history, but it's, it's got a future. So thank you very much. Oh. Oh. <laughs> On behalf of Mayor Sammy Phillips and the Jacksonville City Council and the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, you are presented with the Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award for your great recognitions and efforts in accepting stewardship and to adopt the Wilson Bay shorelines by organizing and executing cleanup activities which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville program presented on this day, April 21st, 2015. Congratulations. On behalf of Sturgeon City of Jacksonville, we sincerely appreciate this award and we appreciate the efforts of all the volunteers and all the young people here, especially our youth and our youth support elements there, who've come together to recognize the value of environmental stewardship and uh, that, that's a long-term investment and uh, we know it'll build great dividends for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have two individuals I want to recognize. First is Stephen Seiko. He's not oh. Tonight. Oh. Do you want Shannon to stand in? For Shannon, Shannon, you want to stand in for Stephen? <laughs> you can accept on his behalf. How's that? Acting on his own behalf and collecting litter and improper items discarded in the water, Mr. Seiko has adopted the Little Creek 
in Northwoods. His first cleaning under the adoption program was in June of 2014. And Shannon, you're going to accept this award on his behalf, and I thank you very much for doing so. On behalf of Mayor Sammy Phillips and the Jacksonville City Council and the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Group, the Eclain and Green Jacksonville Star Award and great re grateful recognitions of the efforts of Mr. Stephen Seiko to accept, accept stewardship of and to adopt the Little Creek and Northwoods by personally executing cleanup activities which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville program presented on this day, April 21st, 2015. I'm sorry Mr. Seiko couldn't make it, but he um, is a great citizen for our community. He's done a really good job of keeping his stream clean. He owns a lot of wetland property and he does an excellent job of exemplifying environmental stewardship in the area, as does all the other adopted stream groups, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you. So, thank you all. Jim Wheeler. Mr. Jim Wheeler. Mr. Jim Wheeler here is a two-time winner of this recognition, having been selected by the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee to be the inaugural recipient of the Gold Star Award for his personal dedication for adopting trails, roads, and waterways. This evening, we recognize Mr. Wheeler, a member now of the City's Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee, for his adoption of Mill Creek and Henderson Green for stewardship. And what a task he has done. Listen to this. Most recently, he collected his 4,000th bag of litter. His first cleaning of the Mill Creek began, there was that much trash in there. That's a lot of trash. Um, he began this in April of 2013, and we certainly want to thank you very much for your efforts, Jim. Thank you. On behalf of Mayor Sammy Phillips and the Jacksonville City Council and the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, we would like to present the Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award in great recognition of the auspicious efforts of Mr. Jim Wheeler, who has collected his 4,000 4, bag of litter from cleanups and to implement the stewardship of and adoption of the Mill Creek and Henderson Green by personally executing cleanup activities which benefits the Clean and Green Jacksonville program presented on this day, April 21st, 2015. Congratulations. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Pat, Shannon, and Emily, uh, the stormwater crew that uh, uh, support not only my efforts, but the other efforts for the uh, adopt the stream program. Uh, you know, the city has got uh, four adopt programs, the parks, streets, trails, and streams, which are the formal way to clean up. But uh, as I said before, about 18 months ago, uh, I'd like to see more individuals informally get involved in cleaning up our environment. You know, if you see a piece of trash, stop and pick it up. Uh, if you own a business, and it gets trashy, or if you have a house and there's litter in the front yard, it's not your litter. Well, guess what? If it's on your property, you own it. Uh, so I encourage individuals to get out and clean up not on their property, maybe walk around the neighborhood, you know, once a week and pick up stuff while you're out exercising because that, that's the true way of cleaning up our city is the individuals going out and doing it. Thank you. If you happen to be here in the uh, in council chambers tonight or watching the meeting on TV, if this has sparked your interest to adopt a stream or a waterway or a pathway or whatever to help make our city beautiful, uh, you can uh, actually contact Carmela George back here, who is our community programs uh, di director, and she can put you on the path to uh, making Jacksonville even a cleaner and greener place. Um, 
I'd like to ask the folks that are actually holding the words if you'd come back up here again just a moment. Uh, we're going to get a photograph with you with the council. If the council could stand and you, you all could get right up along here. And uh, you can join them too. Don't go away. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. A little snafu in the order of things. We'll have our uh, first session of public comment for the evening. Is I don't think anyone signed up on the sign-up sheet, but if you came in after it was taken up and wish to speak, please indicate by raising your hand. I don't see anyone, so we'll move on. Uh, first, I'm going to take a quick break here and allow... Uh, the, one, uh, the folks that came for the presentations, if you want to uh, take this opportunity to um, clear the uh, or scram or, or, or leave or <laughs> skedaddle, skedaddle whatever, whatever term you want to use, uh, be a good time to do it. Or, but you are welcome to stay for the entire meeting if that's what you choose to do. Next on the agenda for tonight, we have the adoption of the consent items. And at this time, I, I uh, entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? We'll go to our first item on the agenda for this evening, and this is a special use permit um, 
for Onslow Community Outreach at 1210 Hargett Street and Ryan King, our planning and permitting administrator will be presenting this item. Mayor. And this is a quasi-judicial uh, hearing, so we're going to go ahead and recess the uh, council meeting at this time and open the public hearing in this matter. Now, do you swear that the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, Gun? I do. All right, stand by just a minute, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mayor. Before the mayor and the council begin to take testimony in this uh, quasi-judicial hearing, I wanted to mention uh, something that occurred two or three regular meetings ago. At that time, the CD administrator came before you and said that in, uh, uh, there were CD funds of approximately $250,000 that would, she'd like to have earmarked for homeless, uh, uh, a homeless shelter. And the council heard uh, her remarks at that time and a couple of things came out, including one of them being this particular site that the ministries was looking at as a possible site for the homeless shelter. And it also came out that there was a time uh, an urgency, if you will, that that money be spent by a date at the end of April, end of May, if you will. Well, a couple of things. Number one, let's go to the time uh, is of the essence. Number one, time is not of the essence in reference to that $250,000. We have discovered that the, the, there's over a year period of time before that would have to be dispersed for a homeless shelter. And of course, council did give an approval that night to use that money for that purpose. But that brings me to the, the most urgent and important point. Many, all of y'all have sat through many quasi-judicial hearings. And as you know, we always tell you, don't let people talk to you about this before you come and you sit at the dais, because the only evidence that you're supposed to consider tonight in reference to this is the evidence you receive from uh, the folks who will be sworn and the testimony and evidence that they present. Furthermore, this is a land use decision. The, the concept and the idea of using $250,000 of CD money to fund a homeless shelter is commendable and that is great and everyone agrees to that but that was in no way even though the site was talked about that night that was in no way site specific again you do not consider that as you consider whether or not this is an appropriate land use for this site but again I wanted to state that for the public because uh, again I didn't want to make sure there was no confusion and I'd be <coughs> glad to answer any questions the mayor or the council may have. Council, any questions? Oh, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor. Council, item four before you tonight is a special use permit which requires a public hearing and that is quasi-judicial as uh, John Carter just mentioned. The city planning permitting staff has received a request from the Onslow Community Outreach for a special use permit application seeking approval of a proposed facility that will include, one part of it will include a homeless shelter. Uh, and that would occupy a 27,000 square foot building, most of us know it as the former Piggly Wiggly building, located at the corner of Hargett Street in Richlands Drive. The 2.79 acre site that's uh, shown before you tonight on the vicinity map uh, would house the Onza Community Outreach Administrative Offices, their Christmas cheer program, soup kitchen, and a homeless shelter. At the planning board meeting earlier this month, the applicants requested a condition be placed on that after discussion, which would limit the amount of that 27,000 square foot building that could be utilized for the homeless shelter portion. And that maximum would be 5,000 square feet. So only 5,000 of that 27,000 square feet could be utilized for a homeless shelter. So just want to make sure that it's clear it's not all a homeless shelter. It's their facility and one part of it will be for the homeless shelter. Uh, as many of you know, they're going to relocate the, the homeless shelter or soup kitchen that's on, you know, on Court Street downtown and they have outgrown that facility and that is why they're looking at this location here on Hargett Street. Per Article 4 of the Unified Development Ordinance, based on a recent amendment, the homeless shelter proposal is within 1,000 feet of area that is used for residential purposes, the New River Apartment Complex, and therefore, uh, plus because it's in the corridor, corridor commercial district, requires the City Council the opportunity to consider the request through the special use permit process. On April 13th, the Planning Advisory Board recommended unanimously to approve this facility with the condition that the 5,000 square foot cap for the homeless center be um, added to the application. 
Uh, one item that was not placed on it by the planning board that staff would request that city council should you look to approve this request would include and that is to ensure that a site plan is submitted to to the city within 18 months or the special use permit would be null and void uh, we discussed that at a plan board i think it was just kind of an oversight i don't think that it was anything intentional nonetheless that wasn't part of the motion therefore that wasn't part of the condition that the planning board recommended uh, when staff prepares the agenda item, we take the information that we have available, we review the codes and ordinances, and we presented in the agenda item uh, findings of facts A through G. Based on our preliminary findings, uh, we have not found any in the negative, and therefore we have recommended approval of this request. However, when the public hearing is held tonight, there may be evidence presented to further support the approval or you may hear testimony tonight under oath that will lead you to find uh, and rec basically deny the permit. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you, at this time. I do know that there are some people here, uh, Dr. Herring with the community outreach, Mr. Theo McClammy is here. And I believe there's also some representatives for the New River Shopping Center across the street. Mr. Jeff Peterson, I see him in the audience tonight. And uh, when you open or when you continue with the public hearing, I'm sure that they will be uh, coming forth with some information. Be happy to answer any questions that the council may have at this time. Council, any questions of Mr. King? Um, Ryan, how did how did the 5,000 square feet uh, limitation come about, and how does that compare to the current square footage that they have available for uh, the homeless shelter? Okay, as far as the current size, I would ask that either Theo or Dr. Herring report on that. But here's what I can tell you that, that from the planning board meeting and what I think is the case. Uh, the planning board, it was, um, the, it, the question came up and the applicants, they basically said that their program, they don't want to provide more uh, room than 5,000 square feet in order to have their administrative offices, the soup kitchen and the Christmas cheer facilities. And that's just kind of their cap. They the the plan identifies 4,500 square feet. They really didn't even want to go higher than that, but through discussion, said you may want to have a little bit of area for growth, and that's kind of where they came up with the 5,000 square foot number. I'm sure that they can speak to that. Um, the other thing, we're in the current facility, in the morning they basically have to transition that building due to the lack of size into their other day facility which is their soup kitchen and this facility is going to be large enough to where they don't have to make that transition because they'll have another part of the building so they're substantially increasing the size of the building i just don't know the exact numbers but i'm sure that that one of the representatives here can give you those exact numbers uh, i'd be interested in knowing what that what those numbers are and then also when you talked about the day transition um, so do those numbers exclude the day stays so they don't have to leave in the morning they can stay but does that transition into another area of the building or is that still part of the 5,000 square feet? as I understand it, that would be still in the 5,000 okay because they're not gonna have to use that same 5,000 square feet for the soup kitchen which is how they operate today okay. so any other questions of mr. King well, you have one how many beds is being proposed for this homeless shelter? Do you have that information? We do not have the number of beds. I know that it was reported at the last meeting that they wanted room enough for 20 men and 20 women and then a family of 10. But I think the applicant would be better suited to give you specifics, but that's what was reported at the planning board meeting. Just with a scientific wild guess here, the 5,000 square foot limitation for the shelter how many people will that accommodate under under your occupancy uh, guidelines I I'd have to get that information back to you I can't answer that right now okay. and finally mr. King um, in terms of children is is there age specific in terms of what's the youngest age a child has to be in order to be accepted into the homeless shelter with their family is from from a zoning standpoint I mean it it doesn't matter but their okay. program individually I, I would prefer that the the representatives speak to that information I do have one other item to add clarity to 
Um, the use plan that's before you shows all the landscaping compliance, street lawn compliance. <laughs> Under Article 5, nonconformities of our UDO, we're not sure how much of that will have to be installed. It will be based on the valuation of the building, which has come back through the appraisal slightly higher than the tax value. So that's the number we'll use, the higher number. When they go to upfit the building, as long as they don't go over 25% of that value of the building, they will not have to do any landscaping, um, buffering, um, upgrades on the outside. When they go over that 25%, they will begin to have to apply the landscaping in accordance with the ordinance. The plan you see tonight before you is the worst case scenario. So on the plan, as you will see, there's a 30 foot buffer that's required on the back side. They may not have to install 30 feet. Help, if, help me out here real quick. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but what kicks that in? The non-conforming section deals with non-conforming site issues. So as you upgrade a building, you have to upgrade the outside of the, of the site. And it's on an equal percentage ratio. Anything under 25%, doesn't require any site improvements. However, as you'll see in my staff report, city council can add conditions to approvals. So let's say, for example, that the council would like to see the 30 foot buffer put in regardless. You know, I think that that would be a reasonable condition the city council may want to consider. Same thing with the parking lot landscaping. I wanted to point that out so that council can, can consider that should you want to add conditions we're just not sure what the upfit cost of the building are going to be at this time. So what you have before you is the worst case scenario. So is that 25% of the appraised value? Correct. Oh. So if they do... I think the, the appraised value of just the structure, not the land okay. or anything like that, is around 230000 Okay. So 25% of that they'd have to do inside the building right. before they would have to do anything outside. And anything above that, it's an equal ratio until you get to 75 percent once it goes to 75 percent or more it's 100 percent site compliance okay other questions of mr mayor i have a question yes if i could mr king all before the council tonight is a special use permit there's mm -hmm. not any approval of any site plan so they're not bound by this site plan this again is one of those cases where they're di divided uh will this is that correct correct Will the site plan come back to council for the review or is that administrative? You no, know, it, it will come back before city okay. council. It just will not be as part of a public hearing. This is the one public hearing tonight. But again, council, as we've talked about the separation of site plans from the special use permit, that becomes problematic, as you know, uh, and, and so forth. But you're not approving a site plan tonight. I want to make that point. <clears throat> <Okay. coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. This is a public hearing on this matter, and uh, I would like to uh, first call, uh, I, I know there's uh, representatives from uh, also uh, community outreach that are here that may want to present uh, some information since you are the uh, applicants on, on this. Uh. Good evening, Mayor Phillips and members of council, the city manager. Joining us, the old McClamey. Please sworn first, please. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm the old McClamey, 600 Court Street. I need to swear you up, him. Okay. So, do you swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you go? I do. All three okay. Do you all swear to that? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, joining me is Dr. Don Herring, our chairman, and I'll uh, uh, lead with a couple uh, answers to the technical questions that you had regarding the space. Uh, the current uh, uh, square footage of this shelter is approximately 2,000 square feet. Uh, we have uh, space to accommodate 26 homeless persons. Uh, we have a dorm room for uh, single uh, men, uh, uh, dorm, dorm room for men, dorm room for women, and two small family rooms uh, for, uh, for, uh, for families. And uh, we publicly say we help 24 people each night. Uh, but uh, during that very cold winter days that Dr. Herring mentioned to you, uh, we uh, work with the fire marshal in our official capacity is 26. But we reserve two of those beds in our partnership with Onslow Memorial Hospital. We assist them with discharge planning of individuals who are ready to be uh, discharged from the hospital, but they have no permanent address. So we reserve two, two, two beds for them. 
Um, in terms of how we arrived at the, uh, the in terms of the 5,000 square foot cap that was discussed at the planning board meeting, in our conceptual designs of the new building, uh, we were looking ahead in terms of the, the space that we currently have for the shelter, and we were looking down the road, uh, and we wanted to move into a structure that would give us sufficient space for at least 20 years. Uh, so we had 2,000 square feet currently, and we projected about 4,400 square feet uh, over the next 20 years. Uh, and so that would probably give us a space 20 years from now to accommodate uh, about 35 or 40 homeless persons. We're a nonprofit, and so we have to live within our means. And so some, we, we would have to have the staff to accommodate that. And certainly we would not want to outpace our capacity to uh, operate the facility in a professional and safe manner. Um, and so when the recommendation was made at the planning board meeting to cap the space at 5,000 square feet, certainly that was in line with our long-term projections of space and, and growth. Uh, in terms, Ms. Wash, in terms of your question regarding the age of the children, in our family rooms, uh, we do have uh, infant children. Uh, it is often, all too often, as Dr. Henry will mention, there, last year I think we had 25 family units, and sometimes there were uh, newborn children uh, in our shelter facility. I will yield to my chairman for uh, his remarks. Mayor Phillips, elected city council members, Dr. Woodruff. On behalf of Onslow Community Outreach, we sincerely appreciate the opportunity to make remarks and answer any questions that you may have. We're very appreciative to your staff for their support along the way and for their guidance and also for their suggestions for, for as needed for improvements there. Our representative, Mr. John Pierce, is here with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Pierce is our site development consultant and he'll be available for comments and questions after my remarks here. On April 13, 2015, Oslo Community Outreach received a positive recommendation from your planning staff and a uh, unanimous uh, approval of the, from your pl planning advisory board for us to seek our special use permit. Many of the technical and regulatory matters uh, regarding the shelter pro program space have already been resolved. Thus, my remarks tonight will focus on program compatibility with community improvement, specifically through our food, housing assistance programs, and our Christmas cheer areas. Our current building is located downtown and it was purchased 21 years ago. July of 1994 for a price of $65,000. We've continuously made improvements and have been good stewards of this property. Today, this property is appraised by bank standards at over $300,000, which is five times what we paid for it. Uh, positive economic development activities are underway downtown, and at some point in the future, we hope to return this property to commercial use. Towards this end, the New River neighborhood is a priority investment area for the city's community development resources. We believe that our housing, food assistance, and our Christmas cheer programs will be a supportive to this community development and support the revitalization of the New River area there. Onslow Community Outreach seeks to invest one and a half million dollars in this New River community area here. Our vision is that we bring our key programs to the 1210 Hargett Street, the area formerly known as the Piggly Wiggly Building, and that they become a, provide a significant improvement to the New River community. We will place positive community service activities in this 27,000 square foot building and bring life to a facility that has been vacant for over 12 years. We have a vision for the building to become a multi-purpose neighborhood center that could advance the following areas there. Importantly, it can advance our nutritional programs to include our traditional soup kitchen and also to bring forth a farmer's market that would bring essential food needs to the residents of this area here. In addition, we would look to bring comprehensive housing services to include the homeless shelter that we're talking about tonight. Again, to re remind the group here, we're looking out of the 27,000 square foot building, we're looking to use just 5,000 square foot for this homeless shelter there. Another area that we're looking to take use of here uh, is 17,000 square feet that would provide flexible space to provide our Christmas cheer program and also provide flexible space for this community. 
As we're all aware of, there's still a, a growing need for meeting space in our community, whether it be civic meeting space, community meeting space, or even um, a religious meeting space. We recognize that this area here, uh, because this whole building will, become, will be installed with sprinklers and all, will provide some flexible use there. Um, recently, we had a health screening in the community there, and the Farm Bureau brought the large vehicles up, and people had to wait outside while waiting for the screening. A flexible space that we would provide there would give such groups like that for like a health screening, valuable area for meeting. We also recognize this flexible space here could provide uh, ice and water storage or storage for emergency supplies and humanitarian relief if needed here. In addition, we would provide and put place our administrative areas there to provide functioning for overseeing the programs and the projects here. The Christmas cheer, soup kitchen, and uh, such things as our farmer market and uh, flex space there would attract hundreds of volunteers annually to this area here. These hundreds of volunteers um, provide, uh, in addition to just coming and volunteering here, they also seek to purchase and provide resources here that could be utilized through the New River Shopping Center. To illustrate that potential there, last year our soup kitchen had 5,500 volunteer registrations downtown at 600 Court Street and had over 18,000 hours of volunteer service there. Uh, these individuals, when they're through volunteering and leave this area, they seek to get goods and services close by when they leave and therefore could really benefit the New River community there. Now, in regards to our clients, our <coughs> clients, majority of them who come to our 600 Court Street have their own transportation or access to public transportation, which we greatly value here in the uh, Jackson community here. Thus, as we seek to look at the New River area there, we recognize that our clients would have transportation and would have access to public access uh, transportation. And again, because one might be in need of food assistance or housing assistance, doesn't mean they're completely without resources or ability to purchase goods and services. Again, those which could be purchased within the New River community here. The economic impact of our soup kitchen just to this uh, provided over $674,000 last year. And just a conservative impact of what Christmas cheer brought to this community was over $375,000. Our proposed future building would be aesthetically pleasing and a source of pride for the neighborhood. And for inside the building, the largest part of this area would be that flex space, which would be used for Christmas cheer, be used to provide for meeting space and support for our community, civic, and religious needs there, and also would be available there uh, should it be necessary for emergency or humanitarian service for the community. Now we appreciate questions about the emergency shelter component of our housing services, and historically we recognize that placing or relocating shelters uh, in the community does create a not in my backyard a reaction. Thus we seek to answer, address questions and concerns honestly and openly. Also, community outreach helps approximately 7,440 people annually there. This is all the services that we provide to all of our clients in the Jackson and Oslo County area there. Our shelter program is operated in a compassionate and professional manner. However, only 3% of all those we serve are shelter clients. And only 4,500 square feet to 5,000 square feet of the proposed location, or just 18% of the whole space is designated to be the shelter. Importantly, and in line with feedback from community partners, a majority of need in this community is a warm, safe day shelter during our dangerously cold days that include snow and ice. An obstacle meeting this uh, community need right now has been, to, has been our efforts to try to safely operate the shelter and a soup kitchen in just one space. Therefore, each day we have to make that choice as to send clients out so that we can continue with our uh, soup kitchen as to get the meals out. So we're trying to run two, two programs in one space. We recognize that the enlarged space here would help us uh, through the purchase and renovation of 1210 Hargett Street would help us meet this identified community need. Our shelter program provides a valuable community service. Homelessness comes at a very high cost to individuals and communities. Research shows that communities save money by providing emergency and support housing to people experiencing homelessness. 
it has proven to be far more cost effective to provide shelter assistance than to leave somebody on the streets or in encampments. Providing housing to someone experiencing homelessness results in reduced utilization of public funded services such as police, health care, and crisis assistance. Onslow Community Outreach and our shelter have operated in a professional, safe, and compassionate manner for 18 years. Last year, of our 241 unduplicated clients, 14 of these residents were children, 29% of those were families, 42% of those were female. Each year, our Onslow Community Outreach Shelter serves between 50 to 70 veterans who find themselves homeless. Our clients receive supportive services and must agree to participate in a positive self-help activities such as job searching, counseling, and performing support chores around the, around the facility there. We do not accept persons who own the sexual offenders registry, nor is anyone allowed in the building that might be appeared to be intoxicated or in using drugs. We do not operate a transient flop house. A majority of our clients improve their situation and exit to become to better housing conditions. However, like any other venture, public or private, nonprofit or commercial, rarely is there 100% client commitment and success rates. Thus, we monitor our residents and hold them accountable for any behavior not in accordance with our program purpose. This accountability includes separation from the program if they not, cannot conform. We proactively call and reach out to public safety and community police officers to help us prevent and resolve problems. To make plain our responsibility to be a good community and business partner in the New River community, we are seeking to maintain and expand our good neighbor commitment. And this commitment includes the following standards. Expanding our program to increase daily mobility through the use of public transit tickets for our clients making laundering, panhandling a violation of our rules and subject to dismissal, uh, instructing clients and committing clients to positive self-help behavior and also reduced behavior that creates a negative impact, and monitoring behavior on a daily basis there. We recognize that to be a good neighbor, we must maintain communication with law enforcement to support community policing goals and activities. We also want to make sure that our facility is safe and that our surrounding areas are kept safe uh, regarding to our clients day or night and also we want to continue to use our annual survey to receive continued feedback uh, and how we can make improvements there. These measures are in line with our mission and they shall guide the delivery of our housing services in a manner that helps and develops and sustains positive relationships with businesses in the New River neighborhood. Our vision works to advance the New River neighborhood by making a significant financial investment eliminating blight, and attracting new consumers and services that support community revitalization. Tonight, you will hear uh, a presentation to include uh, the search for alternate locations in addition or than the one that we're considering here at 1210 Hargett Street. And you'll be asked to, to give consideration to that. And we recognize that, uh, is there additional, you know, are there alternative spaces out here in this community? Yes. Uh, to include one that you'll hear about tonight, a, a 60,000 square foot facility located on Bell Fork Road there. So again, are there alternative sites available to Onslow Community Outreach? <coughs> yes. Is it for sale? Yes. Does it fit our needs? No. Why does it not fit our needs? First, we're seeking a location similar to the area that we're at that we can have an impact on population and impact on community revitalization. The area that the current 60,000 square foot building is located on Bell Fork Road is in a commercial area and is distant from, has a sparse population in that area and is distant from the needs that we need to help serve there. As far as uh, the condition of the building, it is more suited for industrial than humanitarian needs. Um, also regarding size, at 60,000 square feet, uh, that is beyond the capacity and scope of what we can safely or put together a plan to rehab or to uh, revitalize in order to provide the needs that we need to. So in closing tonight, we recognize that most importantly, our vision is rooted in the quality of people who provide a wide array of monetary and volunteer support for these services which reflect the heart of a caring community. 
Tonight, we have representation of our board here, representatives and volunteers. And at this time, I'd like to ask them to stand. If you're a representative or volunteer with Onslow Community Outreach, and we appreciate your attendance tonight and your support. And council tonight, we appreciate your consideration and ask for your approval. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. John Pierce, our site development uh, to, person if you would come up and make a few comments regarding the classification use of our proposed facility thank you thank you thank you John Pierce 45 Johnson Boulevard I think I'm okay being already sworn in I'll make just my comments very brief and we've reviewed and we've we feel and the staff feels and the planning board feels that we've met all the conditions of finding in fact we've uh, as the site plan was shown I, I did the most that would ever have to be done, which in, in fact, if, it, if when, we, when I come back with a site plan to you, uh, that's the worst case scenario that would have to be shown on the plan. And what the facts are, and I'll, I'll ask if you, if you got any questions in just a minute, but the larger a town grows, the more need, and it's just a given, the more need you're gonna have for a homeless shelter. And, and really and truly, one of the things that really hit me is I got a good friend of mine that is involved with Clyde Irving School. And what I can understand, there's kids over there that attend that school that the last meal the think, teacher and the principal thinks they may get is Friday when school turns out, and the next meal they get may be Monday morning when they get a chance to eat breakfast back at the school. And I'm just saying that's a sad situation, and that's, that's not really what I'm here to address tonight, but that's something that was on my mind. I wanted to get it off. And as far as this site, in my mind, creating a devalue in a property, I'll just bring to her, the council's attention, the mayor's attention, one of our former council people has spent several hundred thousand dollars modernized the building within 30 feet of the existing homeless shelter. And to my knowledge, that certainly hadn't devalued his property. If you're, if you're aware of, and I probably ain't too good with his Italian names, I just can learn how to pronounce uh, Councilman Lazar's name pretty well. And I'm working on his wife's name. But at any rate, Biagio's, Biagio, Biagio I think is the way you pronounce it, but I'm not sure on that. But you look at the significant investment right joining the facility. I certainly don't think that has devalued his that area of downtown, and I don't see a, I don't see this property devaluing with the management that, that they put in place and they're proposing and the way the good neighbor process. I certainly don't think that. But but I wanted to address the findings of fact here tonight, and I've proposed, and I feel that we've met all of those. It's certainly permitted with your by special use permit in number A of findings of fact, and in B. Uh, as well as the staff, the Pacific Designs, we, we've identified in UDO by my site plan. And in C, the proposed use is consistent with the neighborhood uh, camel land use plan. We're consistent with that, and it's consistent with the city's land use plan. And in D, as far as the engineering standards, we, we're going to comply with whatever required to, to meet item D. And with the access, we certainly meet that because we're right on, we've got great access. We're going to have pedestrian walkway as, as proposed and and in F there again I don't I think we're in harmony with the land land use plans and I don't think we're going to be a detriment and I don't think that what we're proposing will materially in, endanger the neighborhood whatsoever uh, and if the council has any questions of me or I, I'll certainly be glad to try to answer any and as far as another thought and I wasn't going to mention it but I'll guarantee you probably going to have more crime at the Walmart than you will at this business. I'll guarantee you on that. Council, any questions of Mr. Pierce? Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there uh, anyone else present that wishes to speak on this matter? Yes, ma'am. You, you need to come up front, ma'am. Uh, this is a public hearing, so you're going to have to also be sworn in. Oh, your leg go to sleep on you. <laughs> Bless your heart. Okay. You swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? I do. All right, now please state your name and address for the record. My name is Robin Musselwhite. I just heard about this meeting like 30 minutes before it started. I wanted to say mainly two things. At a um, voting location, this past voting, I heard several people talking about, well, the city don't have to worry about the homeless anymore because we've kicked them out into the county. Well, that really upset me because, and, and I want the gentleman who owns New River to know, these people in this homeless shelter, they're not, 
they're not monsters or whatever. They're people that have fallen on hard times. I have lived here on and off for uh, 56 years. I own my own property for 35 because of an injury and now disability. I lost everything. I didn't know where I was going. I had no idea. I have a family member in that shelter. That family member used to sit around out in the parks and get drunk all the time. He barely drinks now. I think, as they said, this shelter across the street in Piggly Wiggly actually would probably make New River Shopping Center look much better. I, they, these people, when they come from the shelter, they're not there all day. They come over here and they use the Dollar General or they use the stores over there. It's actually would bring more money to New River. And, and I just wanted to say that most of them do work. I am a veteran. Our veterans have a great big need right along with the, the uh, civilians here in Jacksonville. I think that's a perfect location. Ms. Muscle White, would you mind, I'm, I'm sorry, would you mind giving your address to the clerk, please? Sure. <clears throat> Reverend. Do you, uh, I need for you to swear to or, or, or affirm to the. Uh, yes, sir. Do you swear that the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Would you please state your name and address to clerk, please? Reverend Jewel, Church Wealth, 302 West Howard Drive, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh, to Mayor Sammy Phillips, council and city staff, uh, as the pastor of Sandy Run Missionary Baptist Church, which is located on 1503 Hargis Street, I just wanna say to this initiative that I think it's a wonderful idea. And I also want the Onslow County Ministries to understand that uh, we at Sandy Run want to continue to be a good neighbor and we applaud the effort that these homeless persons can now have a location and a large enough facility that the ministries that are in need to help them get them back on their feet and that they can be in an environment that's conducive for them to be productive to our community. So as the pastor of Sandy Run Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm sure that there are a number of other ministries within the community as well that feel the same way. So again, I applaud the city's efforts. I applaud the city council. I applaud city staff for their efforts in Onslow County Outreach Ministries. Thank you, sir. Keys, do you swear that the uh, information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and no nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Please uh, state your name and address, even though she knows it, to the clerk. <laughs> I'm Al Keys. I live at 702 Oakwood Avenue, Jacksonville. I concur with all of the comments that have been made as to the need for uh, additional floor space for the homeless. If any of you have ever gone down and have seen the meals that are served there or have gone out on the on the truck you would understand the need for a facility to support the citizens of Onslow County. It's part of the ministry that you don't hear a lot about is the trucks themselves. People wait in line and depend on those trucks to come out with the with the soup the desserts and occasionally sandwiches. That's a part of it as well. Uh, I have to believe that would only be enhanced as they would be able also to uh, continue serving the community that way as well as expand the uh, sleep space for uh, individuals that's coming there to stay overnight. I also uh, think it's very important, especially during the uh, cold weather uh, that individuals be allowed to remain there during the day, especially in those uh, very cold temperatures because there's no place else for them to go. And I fully support it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any questions of Mr. Keyes? No okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, 
You swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? Yes, sir, I do. So please state your name and address for the My court. name is Brock Goss. My address is 103 Bell Chase Way here in Jacksonville. The reason I wanted to come up, my name is Brock Goss, and I'm a um, proud member of the Jacksonville Board of Realtors. And I had the distinct pleasure of being able to represent Mr. Peterson at his property at New River Shopping Center to try to help get the spaces leased and to possibly find a developer that would come here and do some joint venture development in that area. And, and, and I also feel privileged that my uncle um, was the one who kind of taught me this trade when I was a young man. And I asked him to get involved and to come here to Jacksonville and do a kind of a site review and also to have a meeting with Mr. Dr. Woodruff, who I brought him here. His name is Johnny Goss, and uh, he's worked for, for about 40 years in commercial development, and particularly with groups out of Atlanta, Georgia, that specifically go and revitalize shopping centers like New River Shopping Center. And, and moreover, they just finished doing a project called Washington Crossing in Augusta, Georgia, that looked almost very, very similar to the shopping center here in Jacksonville. So that's why his interest was so great. Um, unfortunately, leaving here, some of the things that we found uh, about this particular area made developers kind of not very interested in their three questions. And this is my main point as to why I wanted to speak tonight. And I appreciate your listening to that. Is going to these developers, um, and for example, the shopping center group, Edens, Simbler, which Edens and Simbler are both out of um, North Carolina and Bailey Construction out of Atlanta and VCC out of Atlanta, Georgia. They mainly want to know three things. The first thing they want to know is they want to know what the income is, of a five, the, in, the income average of the five mile radius this area. And believe it or not, it's pretty favorable because of its vicinity to Northwoods in this area right across the, right across the way of Marine Boulevard, there's Northwoods right there. It's about $46,000 per the five mile radius. And the next thing they want to know is they want to know what the commerce is in the area within a five mile radius and which that number was great. It was about $600 million in commerce annually in the area five miles surrounding this specific site. And the third thing was are all the buildings that are commensurate, that are commercial corridor, that are commensurate buildings being utilized to their highest and best use. And, and unfortunately, that was the most unfavorable thing that were, that were the findings of this particular area because um, the material fact that there was a proposal that there was a homeless shelter going into this area, even though it was only a portion of the building, they felt like that that was not the highest and best use for the building at that area near, shop, near the shopping center, which deterred these developers from coming here to this area and redeveloping the shopping center and the surrounding area. I just wanted to make sure that I um, brought that to, to a, a point of a fact. And if I have any questions, I'd be glad to take those. So you're telling us that had the homeless shelter not been rumored to go there, somebody would be redeveloping New River Shopping Center? No, sir, absolutely not. Oh, okay. The, 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 fa Sorry. the fact that I was trying order. to bring forth is that the, the, the fact that there was a proposal for that gave me a reason to disclose it as a material fact when they asked questions about what are the plans for the area that better being developed. And when I disclosed that, that was when kind of the emails stopped and, and people were saying that they were not interested. That's the reason I disclosed that. Any other questions? No. Thank you, Mr. Gosh. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir, over here. <coughs> You know, if I could get you to swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out. I do. Please state your name and address to the clerk. My name is Jeff Peterson. I live at 139 Lanigan Place, Cary, North Carolina. Thank wow. You. Who comes before the city council and talks against the homeless? I mean, who is this guy? I mean, if you think about it, it's a tough sell. It really is. I look like you guys. I mean, I'm a Rotarian, like these gentlemen right here. Been a Rotarian just about 25 years. Incoming president, just like Dr. Herring. We uh, met actually at Pets a couple months ago. I'm a businessman like John Pierce. Look like him too. Actually, I was a Boy Scout, an Eagle Scout, just like the boys that were just here. I was a Boy Scout Eagle at Richlands Troop 215 back in the day. So I know I have a hard sell, but I want to talk a little bit about why I'm here first. 
And Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, and City, plans, uh, city Planners, uh, Dr. Woodruff, thank you for allowing me to speak on this most important matter before you. Um, my name is Jeff Peterson. I live in Cary, but I'm, I'm from around here. I grew up here. I grew up in Onslow County, specifically graduating from Richlands High in 1977. And I can remember the New River Shopping Center as being the focal point of Jacksonville and Onslow County. My dad played Santa Claus in the Easter Bunny in a little hut there in the 70s. He used to make me be his, his aide back then. And as a teenager, that, believe me, that was a tougher sell than tonight is. So, but I had to do it. Anyway, I used to go to the old Leader Brothers to get all my Boy Scout supplies. Rose's department store was where we went to school, school shopping. And on Saturdays, my brother and I would get dropped off at the movie theater for free matinees. My mom still lives in Bryn Mawr, and my sister in Northwoods is with me tonight. So I still have an interest in what goes on in this community. I always have. Uh, New River Shopping Center, as you know, and there it is, has a couple of different owners, and it's divided up into 13, uh, 10, or, 10 or 12 tracks, separate tracks. 13 or 14 years ago, I started buying parcels as they became available. The first couple I bought from Haywood Wichard in 2003. Then I bought the section which now occupies Planet Fitness from Woody Marlowe, and the last section I pur purchased was the old New River Pottery that was uh, owned by Rick Mitchell and is now the Miller Mott and Next Links Call Center. I'd like to talk a little bit about New River and then get to the discussion of the old Piggly Wiggly, which is the proposed Onslow Community Outreach. The amount of dollars that have been spent by myself and various business owners in the past few years has been considerable. I'd like to show some slides which are coming up now. Millermont College we brought in in 2010, and Next Links Call Center we brought in in 2009. Those combined, the uh, um, investment by myself personally was almost $2 million. Planet Fitness came in, in in 2014. They invested $2 million themselves, and I just received a quote from uh, Eric Smith, who is the owner of Planet Fitness, could not be here tonight. And, and I quote him, he said, shelter is not what, uh, he said, um, shelter is not what I had in mind when we spent $2 million and bought into the city re revitalization, end quote. We've got a lot of other smaller tenants like Unique Salon, uh, a newer tenant there has put a lot of money into their space. You can see they've got a nice looking space. Finders Keepers, which is actually the retail center of the Onslow Women's Center, their thrift store has done a really good job and been there for years. We recently moved them. Uh, Stellar Consignment and uh, Custom Upholstery right there. Stellar Consignment is actually owned by my niece and the upholstery is owned by my sister. And there's my niece. Um, we've also put in Sylvanae's Chicken and Waffles and several other smaller ones. Jacksonville Beauty, Beauty Supply has been there for 20 plus years. They've been there longer than I have. Uh, and they recently expanded. But that's not all we've done. I saw in your planning meeting a few weeks ago where there were some slides of the shopping center that showed some vacancies like that right there. That looked vacant and it doesn't look that great, but that is the Dollar General that's going in and they're taking 12,000 feet in a total gut job. They're spending, I don't know exactly how much they're spending, but it's a lot. Um, they're going from 7,000 feet to 12,000 feet in total renovation. We've got next to Planet Fitness where Dollar General is right now, we've got a children's inflatable party place that's going in and they're taking 15,000 feet. If you're not familiar with them, they're similar to a monkey's jo uh, Monkey Joe's, which uh, I can't really give you the name of them right now, but they're going to be bringing three to 400 children there every Saturday. And then the last one I've got, which I do not have a picture of, is we just signed a lease with a new nail salon that's going in next to the call center. Uh, I've got to take a sip of water if you don't mind. I get dry mouth while I'm talking. That's the one difference from the last meeting. <laughs> so. Anyway, you can imagine my elation when I spoke with Dr. Woodruff and have been speaking with him about New River being a primary focus for Jacksonville and the efforts to revitalize the area. I watched the broadcast where Dr. Woodruff addressed City Council and a couple weeks ago explained the time, effort, and commitment it would take and the council seemed to be very on board. I'd like to see the slide of the proposed development in the area, this right here. This is what was sent to me and I saw it and it shows all the area around New River that's going to be coming online whenever that housing, as we start to start to redevelop that housing. When you show that and you know the housing's going in there and you've got new rooftops, small commercial, retail, 
it gets everyone excited about that. It gets people excited in my center, and that's what I've been selling tenants. That's what I've been selling them to come in and say, look, guys, I know this is what it is today, but tomorrow, this is what it can be. It can be like it was back in the 70s and the early 80s. Which brings me to today. The proposed homeless shelter soup kitchen is exactly opposite of what we're trying to accomplish. I'm not here just representing myself. I'm, all re I'm also representing all the small business owners in New River. I've got signed petitions from 15 separate small business owners in New River. I just signed last week, and the petition reads, which I will turn this into you, it says, we the undersigned being small business owners express our objection to the current plans to relocate the homeless shelter in the former Piggly Wiggly location, New River. We recognize the need for a homeless shelter in the community, but feel that locating the shelter adjacent and in close proximity to shopping, current residential, and to proposed new residential will be a detriment to attracting new development and visitors to the New River Shopping Center area. We've all invested heavily in New River with the hope that New River Shopping Center would continue to be able to attract new and better businesses, thus assuring our own hard work pays off. As you saw from previous photos, there has been a considerable amount of money invested by many businesses, small businesses, who probably could never afford Western Boulevard rental rates. A lot of these business owners, this was their first business. They've been here for years. We do have some new ones. We've had some turnover. But the ones that can make it, they can get in there at an introductory rate, and they seem to be doing very well if they can last more than a year. Last week, I got on the phone and spoke with four different commercial appraisals, appraisers. Bill Hicks and Mark Morgan with Fred Beck and Associates. They're the ones that did the last appraisal for me in New River, so they're familiar with this property. Diana Spencer with Paramount Appraisal Group and Rich Kirkland with Kirkland Appraisals. All said that the perception would be negative and that perception becomes reality in an appraisal. They use much stronger wording in conversation. And I'd like to read parts of his letter, which I'd also like to introduce. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I'm going to read you the highlighted parts, if you don't mind. This is from Kirkland Appraisals. He said, it is the burden of the proponents and applicant of this shelter to show why there is not a negative impact on adjoining properties and that this should be based on specific data and not generalizations. It's the burden of the proponents. They took a survey in, in 2008, which he, he um, referenced. He said, in this survey, 95% of the appraisers considered a residential home within 500 feet to be negatively impacted. He went on to say, the appraisers surveyed indicated an 80% considered shopping center within 500 feet to be negatively impacted. He said, it is helpful to note that the appraisers surveyed 92% of the respondents had 20 or more years of experience in appraising. In conclusion, he wrote, first, the market value, regardless of which definition you use, is based on perceived value. He goes on to say, the expectations of the appraisers surveyed is that there is a negative impact on property value. The data from that survey is unequivocal and, unequivocal and is provided primarily by appraisers with over 20 years experience. And finally, he says, he would strongly encourage the applicant be required to provide evidence from North Carolina that would address these questions in regards to the impact of property value. As I understand, Section 118, special conditions, special and conditional use permits. And I did pull this up to read some passages. In Section D, the council procedure on special condition use applicants, number four, it says, if the application is found not to be in compliance with one or more of the required findings in subsection E, which uh, Mr. Pierce referenced, of this section or any other applicable section of the ordinance, the application shall be denied. When I switch to Section E, the required findings, I find E1C, the location and character of the use will be in conformity with the city's land use plan and other comprehensive plan elements. Well, when I look back at the, the city's land use plan in the future for this area, I don't see how that could fit that. E, which Mr. Pierce skipped over, the proposed special conditional use will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting properties. The proposed, I want to read that again. The proposed special conditional use will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting properties. I don't find where they've substantiated any of that. They have shown no proof of anything with values. 
and F, the proposed special conditional use will be compatible and in harmony with adjoining land uses in the development pattern of the immediate area. I don't believe that fits the description either, the required findings. My opinion, the homeless shelter has offered nothing tangible to prove and they have the burden that my property, my neighbor's property, and the businesses they represent will not be negatively impacted. I don't need to prove it, they need to prove it. I don't believe they met the requirement. Remember, the perception becomes reality. I'd like to say that allowing a variance for this usage is exactly opposite of what Jacksonville is trying to accomplish. Developers will be reluctant to put money into an area whose newest addition is a homeless shelter or soup kitchen. If you're trying to sell a house, a community, a standard of living, would you want to be next to a huge homeless shelter or a homeless shelter, no matter how big it is, next door to residential? Would you want your children to enroll in a magnet school right down the street? No one will put money into this or believe Jacksonville is serious about committing resources to the areas, to the area. Now, like I said when I introduced myself, I'm not against homeless shelters. I do a lot of charity work myself. I'm on the board of a couple of charities. I've done charity work all my life. But there is a place for it, and I <coughs> believe they have just picked the wrong location. Now, I'm not saying I have the exact right location, but I do have an idea. I know they're a great organization, and they have done great service over the years. I know the service is what the community needs. I realize that as well. I believe it when Dr. Heron tells me that they will be a good neighbor, he, that he believes it. I believe he believes that. But going from 2,000 to 28,000 feet is like going from a convenience store to a Walmart. They don't know what they don't know. They just don't. This plan will only attract many more transits from outlying areas, not just from New River and downtown. In the planning uh, department um, meeting, they were talking about that other communities, outlying communities, were excited about what they were bringing to the area. Of course they're excited because it's going to be here. That's why they're excited. This is no longer going to be a community. This isn't, this isn't just for the community. It's going to be for the whole area. It's going to be for the area and bigger surrounding area. It won't just be for downtown Jacksonville and New River. This will be serving Richland, Swansboro, and even beyond. <clears throat> There's a better location, which they also reference. Belfort Road is less than two miles away. Less than two miles away. Still able to serve the community. The owner's willing and motivated to sell or lease. I, just, I spoke with him three times. He's willing to do just about anything. Now they would say, it's too large a location, it's too large a space, it's outside of the location, and it would cost too much money. I say it would be cheaper. I really think it would be cheaper. Now maybe not on the front end, but their business plan could use tweaking. Right now they are subsidized through donations, and they're not self-supporting. They could be self-supporting if they took a larger space, a much larger space. They could take that space and lease it to other nonprofits. That's what they do. There's a, a, a charity in Cary that's been doing that now for years. Um, Dorcas, uh, Dorcas Thrift Shop, which is what they go by the name of, has bought a shopping center out right in Cary that's not next to residential. But what they do, what they have done there is they have bought the whole center and they lease out to other nonprofits and other businesses. Right now, they lease to 78% nonprofits, and they hope to be a 100%. And you can pull that up on their website. But they are self-supporting. If they took that 60,000 space, front end maybe a little bit more, but I believe that Mr. Rose would work with them on the pricing and also on what they did front end, they could find other nonprofits like, like Habitat, or there's any number of people that need a lot of space but don't have a lot of money. It would be a win-win all the way around. That's just one idea that I have. I'm not trying to tell them how to run their business, but eh, maybe I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there, is, there are some concerns that they had, and in, in, in they had talked about the Piggly Wiggly. It's been vacant for 12 years. It's actually been vacant probably closer to 15. The only reason why that location was vacant was because the owners of the Piggly Wiggly spot signed a lease with Food Line for 15 years, and Food Line's intent from day one was to keep that space dark to keep out a competitor. Why would they pay for 15 years? They paid for 15 years because they didn't want a competitor to come in because they know somebody else would be interested in that space. The, part, the place just wasn't on the market long enough. A grocery store or something of that nature is what the area truly needs. I have not done an impact study, and I don't pretend to know the exact numbers, but I can 
assure you the economic impact for a grocery store and its employees would be far greater than it would be for a uh, community service that basically they're only using 10,000 feet and 18,000 feet are going to be vacant for 11 months of the year. I have the same concerns as other property owners, business, residential, and schools have. Where do the people go who get turned away from the shelter? Where do the people go during the day and night who come for the soup kitchen? I can think we can all surmise that most will just wander around New River Shopping Center and adjoining residential. Would you want to live and shop here if you know that people are getting turned out at 7 in the morning? Onslow Community Outreach fills a vital need of our community and has done an excellent job over the years with the 20 with the 2,000 feet they now have. I truly believe they have the best of intentions. However, what form will they ultimately grow into with 27,000 feet? I don't think they know where they're gonna grow. I know if there are any business people here, such as myself, when you grow into a space and you move into a space, you usually get more space than what you need. That's just the way it, it seems to pan out. However, your space evolves, your business evolves, and I know my business did not look like it looks now 10 years ago businesses evolve and not always in the direction that you envision it. What I can see happening is that they come in here and they'll have 5,000 feet dedicated to the homeless shelter, which is what, they have the, what they'll have the permit for. But over time, the board will turn over. There'll be three, four, five boards down the road, six, seven years, there'll be a whole new board, mostly new board. They won't remember why they're only using 5,000 feet and they've got 18,000 feet of mostly vacant space most of the year. Eventually, I could very easily see them saying, well, we just use a few more feet here and a few more feet there and the next thing you know, they have 80 beds. Well, nobody's gonna say anything, nobody's gonna complain unless somebody like me comes along and says, hey, you guys stepped over the line, you're serving too many. Then they would come back and they would come before us and they would say, we're gonna have to put 30 people on the street. We're gonna have to put 50 people on the street and that's not gonna happen. This is gonna be an attractant, and it's going to be, it's gonna be an attractant for homeless, and um, it's not gonna be in the best interest of the shopping center, it's not gonna be in the best interest of the business owners, and it's not gonna be in the best interest of the residential in this area. I tell you, we will not grow this area like you think we'll grow this area. It will not be revitalized anytime soon with this going in. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Council, is there any questions of Mr. Peterson? Thank you. Thank you. All right, there's, uh, yes, ma'am. If you, you spread the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Would you please state your name and address for the clerk? My name is Judy Murphy. I live at 1274 Lake Hole Road in Midway Park. I come, I'm a volunteer cook at the soup kitchen, and I've been there for about 15, 16 years. And I get there sometime at seven o'clock in the morning. And this is the first area. I went to Maryland and stayed for many, many years. There is shelters there that's right in communities. Shelter makes people better people. We all fall short sometime and be homeless. If you've never been homeless before, you don't know what's going on out there. When a person come in and have nowhere to stay, and it's cold, and they say, thank God I got somewhere to lay my head at tonight. It's not all bad people that comes into that shelter. There's women there with children, little children, have nowhere to go. I don't think it would interfere with New River Shopping Center. I think it would be a better place. Sometimes we have to stop serving because we don't have enough seating room for the people to come in and sit down to get a hot meal. I've been out on the soup truck with them. People be lining up 8 o'clock in the morning. We don't get there to 10 to 10.30. And they stand there waiting for a hot cup of soup. We don't know what's going on on the outside unless you've been out in the community. I've been there, even in New, up in Washington, D.C. area. My son was homeless, not because of me, it was because of him living with someone else that put him out. His pride wouldn't let him call me. He went into a church homeless shelter. He found God there. 
So we got to look at the people in the community, not tearing down, but build up, pray for them. Anytime a person come in and say, thank you for this good meal, and I know they're going back in the woods to sleep somewhere that night. The soup kitchen is a good thing. The shelter is a good thing. It's not because they want to be there. They have no choice. So let's get New River ready for them, that they have a place to sleep, that they don't have to go out in the rain. A mother with a baby in her arm going out in the rain in the morning. I put them in my car and let them sit there for a while or take them where they want to go. It's not because they want to. I hear what he said. You never been home. You got money. You can do what you want to do. They not going to bring your, 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 your community, your store down. They might bring your store up. Ma'am, address the council, please. They may bring, bring the store up. But I mean, they don't have the finance. Like the lady said, she lost her job. <coughs> she lost everything. It wasn't because she wanted to. But we all fall short. But God said he would lift us up. So I'm saying let the shelter be in New River Shopping Center so that we could help other people to lift them up, not tear them down. That's hope. Thank you for listening to me. Anyone else wish to speak? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing in this matter. And, Council, you're being asked to, uh, I'm sorry, to approve the uh, request here. Uh, special use permit. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the special use permit with findings of facts A through G being found in the affirmative Contention upon a site plan being submitted within 18 months or the special use permit becomes null and void. And two, that the homeless shelter be limited in size to 5,000 square feet. Second. Comments? I have one, one comment. Uh, okay. The, uh, the suggestion to move it to Belfort uh, is not a bad idea from uh, on the face of it, but it does does contradict what the other gentleman was saying about the five mile radius. You're still going to have to answer in the affirmative uh, for New River Shopping Center that uh, it, even if they're out in the Bell Fork area, that, that they're going to be within <clears throat> five miles of, of the shopping center. It's still going to be a negative for your your demographics. Um, I, the only the only uh, I don't have any uh, proof that it that it will not injure the the value of your investment, and I certainly applaud your investments, uh, except to say that uh, where they're currently located has, has been a benefit and a blessing to the uh, downtown area. There's been a, uh, a lot of, uh, just recently, a lot of uh, investment in that downtown area, in, and they're around the, the soup kitchen, the, the homeless shelter area, the Oslo Community Ministries. I think they've been a blessing to the downtown as far as being one of the first ones downtown, they actually uh, showed faith in the downtown by going down there perhaps. Maybe there was nowhere else for them to go, but it's certainly been a, uh, a positive thing for the downtown. I think it's going to be a positive thing for the New River, New River <coughs> community, so I'm, I'm in support of it. I'm going to make a quick comment here. Um, first off, uh, I want to uh, thank Mr. Peterson uh, for your your vision for the New River area. I think what you're doing over there is very important for the vitality of that area and the city of Jacksonville. Um, also, the, I think you said there was 15 people that signed a petition. Was that correct number uh, of people that have located that have taken their hard earned money and have invested in business opportunities in that center? Uh, you know, I can understand their concerns and your concern. I really do. When you say you have nothing against homeless shelters, I believe every word of it. I know you don't. You're a, you're a community-oriented, community-minded person. Uh, this is a hard decision. To, this is a hard decision to make. It really is. I mean, you're trying to balance everybody's interest here, and it's not a very easy thing to do. <clears throat> but I don't want to go uh, without mentioning my gratitude towards you 
for what you've done over there. And, and you've really got the shopping center looking really good. And I hope that we can continue in that uh, direction regardless of what happens with the vote tonight. And you do have the city's support on that, you know, to help with, you, you know, as you progress along in that way. Uh, to the folks that have come out from Monso Minute or out community outreach, I understand, you know, uh, the driving force here is you want to be able to serve your people. Uh, you don't, you have several uh, need, uh, needs that you have to meet as far as capacity is concerned. I know that for years that you, uh, for several years, you've used the old uh, food, uh, Piggly Wiggly over there for uh, Christmas cheer, which is a wonderful program. I don't think anyone in this room can disagree with that, that there's so many uh, children have been served, so many people have been served, not just children, but people have been served that normally would not even be able to enjoy, you know, that holiday, the Christmas holidays. Uh, the work that's been down, downtown, uh, you know, you've done a great job of, of feeding the hungry, going out with your meals, like somebody was talking about the trucks, I think Oz was, I mean, uh, Al was talking about the trucks. I think that's a wonderful thing. There's a lot of people out there. The story about kids not being able, you know, I think you mentioned it, John, about the kids not being able to eat from the time they left school on Friday till the time they come back on Monday. That's a sad story to hear. But you know what? It ain't a story. It's the truth. That, that condition does exist. So we have to balance interest here. And I think this is a hard decision for the council to make. But I'm going to, I just wanted to make those comments there. And, uh, we do have a motion and a second, and I will allow any other comments to be made. All right, with that said, uh, all those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the next, the next item is uh, a special use permit uh, public hearing also for a uh, special use permit and a type three site plan for a telecommunication tower located at 2394 uh, Wilmington Highway. Jeremy Smith being uh, presenting this matter. Uh, do you swear that the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you go? I do. Right, thank you. Jeremy. Oh, I'm, I did. There we go. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, you do have before you a application and type three site plan for a special use permit submitted by U.S. Cellular for 2394 Wilmington Highway. You'll notice the vicinity map on the screen before you. This is the same location as the New River Harley Davidson at the corner of Onslow Pines and Wilmington Highway, U.S. 17. This is aerial photography of the current New River Harley Davidson. And where the noted project site is, is the general area where the tower is gonna to be located. This property is zoned corridor commercial. It is bordered to the north by properties, both zoned corridor commercial and RMFLD, used for single family. And the commercial properties are used by uh, Chico's used tires. Properties to the west are zoned RSF 20 and currently undeveloped. Properties across Onslow Pines Road are also zoned RSF 20 and developed as single family. The property across Wilmington Highway is Marine Corps Air Station New River. You'll notice the site plan on the screen before you. As required by ordinance, this site will have a type A vegetative buffer around the compound as well as a six foot opaque fence. On the April 13th meeting, the Planning Advisory Board recommended approval of this request. Since that time, staff has been in discussion with the Marine Corps Air Station, and they have identified the need for lighting on this tower, a red blinking light. Um, staff had reported at the Planning Advisory Board that the tower, as proposed, had no lighting. We discussed this request from Marine Corps Air Station with the applicant. They are more than willing to 
sign on and do this. They've already amended their plans, and as staff makes this recommendation tonight, we would add that condition that lighting be placed on this 160 foot, 160 foot tall telecommunication tower. So with that said, staff and the planning board have recommended approval of this request with findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative and with the new condition that lighting be added consistent with the request from Marine Corps Air Station. It is a monopole. Uh, the manager has directed me to make that clear. No guide wires. It is a monopole, 160-foot steel pole. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Michael Doran, representative of U.S. Cellular, is in attendance, and he will be happy to answer any questions that you may have as well. Council, any questions? All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, uh, this is, we are in the public hearing, so at this time I'll ask anybody else who wishes to speak to this matter, they please come forward. Do you swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you go? Yes. Would you please state your name and address to the clerk? Michael Doran, 1205, or excuse me, that's my Illinois, uh, 1209 East Fire Tower Road, Greenville, North Carolina. And we've been looking at this area for a while. Uh, we just, uh, this site <clears throat> also connects to a site we're just getting leased up in the MCA, MS, MCAS uh, military base. So this is a site that connects to it. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Council, any questions of Mr. Dorn? Thank you, sir. Right. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing in this matter. Council, you being at, you're being asked to approve the special use site, uh, use permit and site uh, type three site plan. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the special use permit and site plan with findings of fact A through G being found in the affirmative. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there a further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, that brings us to agenda item number six, and this is appointment uh, to the Jacksonville Oslo Sports Commission. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, can we ask you to verify that the motion did or did not include the conditions? Pardon? There was no the conditions light. listed. The light? Yes. Yes. You did, it. You mm -hmm. did want that yes. in your motion? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Everybody was good with that, right, in the motion? All right. Not bust. Okay, let's see here. Um, we have a uh, bylaws of sports commission. Uh, we're looking to uh, <coughs> appoint uh, persons. Uh, let's see, stand by. Let's see, bylaws of the uh, Jacksonville Oslo Sports Commission Incorporated created by the city of Jacksonville calling the city council to appoint one half the membership of the board of directors from recommendations made by the board of directors. And the board has adopted bylaws that created staggered three-year terms and a three-term limit for membership. The bylaws also codify requirements of federal law for uh, service on a nonprofit board. And uh, they're looking to have some people appointed, so I'm uh, not clear on how many. There's two, two appointments. Okay. Mr. Bitter. Move the nomination of Michael Lazara for a seat E for three-year term, and Kim Oliver, seat F, for likewise a three-year term. Okay. Is there any other nominations? Mayor Phillips, I move that the nominations be closed and the candidates be accepted by acclamation. Okay. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. That brings us to our last section of public comment for the evening. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak? Ms. Ms. Long. Okay. <laughs> My name is Carol Horse Long, and I live at 1209 Decatur Road in Jacksonville. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for passing the special use permit for the Onslow County uh, Outreach, Onslow Community Outreach. Um, I am a native native of Onslow County, and I've always said I've always wanted the best thing for Jacksonville and Onslow County. Um, I've even talked to Sammy or someone one time and I said, you know, my taxes are, are rising, but I don't, I'd rather you tax me than to fee me because I can take it off of my income tax. But uh, <laughs> I just want you to know that I am very supportive of this. 
Um, I have grown up in New River, and it was during the 50s and the 60s, not the 70s or the 80s, that uh, New River became the social town because that was where we had to go. And I walked over there many, many days because I grew up right over here on Brentwood Avenue. And I really do believe that uh, the statements that were made that the boards will, will turn over and forget and increase, I just don't believe that's going to happen. Um, because if we have that many people that want to be on the boards, I want them to stand up right now <laughs> because we're all on the same boards everywhere we go. But um, I think that we are going to be good stewards for New River. It is across the street, and I believe that our landscaping and the way we're going to have that building, that it's going to be a pride to New River. Uh, and I speak from that from my heart because I really do believe that people in this area or in Jacksonville wants to see that area produced and to be and to be a better looking area so to speak um, I have supported a grocery store there for many many years when we were doing it because there is no grocery store in this area but none happened to come there's a little area over there but I'm hoping that in the process down this and I'm not making promises because I don't have that kind of authority but I'm hoping that we'll be able to do some type of grocery store areas over there for the people that live in New River and I do know that it is a magnet school but there are people in the New River area that go to Clyde Irwin school not everybody else from the county it serves that section also um, but I do thank you for your support and what you've done and um, I appreciate everything that you are doing for the city of Jacksonville thank you thank you anyone else I want to I want to tail in on that myself here I, I wished I would have said this uh, when everybody was still here but I did want to point out uh, one thing on behalf of the uh, uh, community outreach and, and that is the fact that the shelter downtown and the soup kitchen have been run wonderfully down there um, you know as long as y'all been there I do not recall any problems ever coming through me uh, of anything out of the way and I don't think we'll ever see that in New River either you know I mean I just don't think I don't think it brews that kind of trouble so uh, I, I think a lot of times you know I think you pointed it out the best in something you said, you know, that it wasn't a flop house. And that's, I think a lot of times people get that confused in their mind that that's what that sort of institution is going to be. But that's not what it's turned out to be downtown, and I don't expect it to be anything different in New River if, that, <clears throat> if it comes to pass over there. So, anyway, uh, I guess we'll move on to our reports. Mr. Ward. Proud to be here, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, no report. Thank you, sir. No report. <coughs> Mr. Bittner. Well, I know you're always anxious to hear something about what Onwasa is doing. I'd love to hear it. We're about 30 days away from putting the Northwest Treat Regional Treatment Plant in operation, <coughs> which is good for the environment considering the number of overflows they've had in the Richlands plant, and that'll, that plant will be put to, bit, to rest. And the, um, and that's it. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tim Lazar. No report. Dr. Woodruff. Mr. Mayor, members of council, Glenn, if you're in the control in the control room, would you mind stepping out, please? While Glenn is coming out, let me make several announcements. The city recreation program is currently accepting applications for our summer youth activities. Several of those programs are filling up very quickly. Therefore, if any of the citizens, whether they're inside the city or in the urban area, you're welcome to contact the recreation uh, director and the program there at the Commons to sign up for summer activities. Mr. Hargett, would you step up to the mic a moment? Mayor, it's, Mayor, members of council, it's with great privilege and pleasure that I read to you the following. Approximately 10 years ago, the North Carolina City and, Count, City and County Communicators Association was established. We're very pleased to tell you that at its recent meeting, Glenn Hargett, assistant manager for the city of Jacksonville, was elected as the new president for the North Carolina City County Communicators Association. Glenn, thank you for your service. Thank you. It's a great honor to represent an organization like the city of Jacksonville and to carry forward what we do to others. Thank you. Congratulations, Glenn. Two other matters. I would like to remind the 
the public that on May the 5th in this chamber as part of your regular council agenda, there will be a public hearing regarding the budget for FY16. Mayor and Council, we thank you for your leadership, for what you're doing. We remind you we have another budget workshop one week from tonight, April 28th at 5 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Carter. No report, Mayor. All right, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right.